Well, you thought we were gone, but now we're back. And if you don't get the hooker vaccine, you'll be blue, dead blue. <laughs> right, Ben? Uh, where where does one inject the hooker vaccine? Bend over and I'll show you. It's hooked on TJ Hooker. Oh. Welcome to Hooked on TJ Hooker, the one and only podcast about television, Jay Hooker's many adventures. I am your host, Eric Siska, joined as always with co-host Benjamin Wooster. I am also here. I am glad to be off our summer break. Oh, well, we got to be check out, quite a big Check break. out this tan. Yeah. yeah. Big, big break indeed. Mm, uh, big break all over that tan. Mm. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah, oh my, I heard, my skin is breaking. <laughs> I heard a, a little a little muttering in the back. We got some jokers in the paddy wagon over here, right? <laughs> uh-huh, this uh-huh. is a special That's episode, right. right? It's the season four premiere. Can we get excited? And we hate movies this year. This is a podcast I've heard a lot about. <laughs> mm. Yeah. <laughs> so that's Andrew Jupin. Yo. Steven Sadek. Uh, I would like to. Am I, uh, two questions. Am I being detained, and can I speak to my lawyer? Well, it's T. It's T. J. Hooker. So no. Well, yes and no. <laughs> yeah, um, you're being Chris, detained indefinitely, dude. <laughs> <laughs> and Chris Cabin. So what do I have to do to make detective? Like right Ooh. out the gate, what 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 do what I have to bend do? over and I'll show to, you. <laughs> oh crap! Oh, okay, I, I I'm willing to do it if it's you got a detective. You got to plant evidence on some people. Right. I'm ready to do it. Dude, Let's watch out. CJ. Look out the streets of New York. Here comes Detective Cabin. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah I've been, I now, would have been on the, t- I would have been uh, uh, the team versus Serpico. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Chris, Detective Chris Cabin's a real loose cannon. He'll drop his gun and then he'll go off. And who knows what's going to happen? Indeed. <laughs> Uh, so we're ga- the, yep. the more bumbling, the better. Mm-hmm. We like our detectives bumbling. I love it. A lot of pizza grease on my hands while I'm trying to take <laughs> sure. out the, the, the next revolver just to shoot some innocent person that's like doing jaywalking or something. Sounds like an NYPD cop, my friend. Do- Look, yeah. I'm trying to fit in. Doing jaywalking. <laughs> this is what, what he just said. Uh, so, so an elderly comedian asking <laughs> really simple trivia questions. He'll shoot open fire. Can I tell you? Can I tell yeah. you? I have some fucking terrible news. I don't know if anybody else saw this. I saw a headline the other day, and now this is probably like a month ago from when we're recording it, but uh, there was a thing. It was a fucking picture of Jay Leno, and it just said, television legend Jay Leno ready to return to primetime TV. Oh, no. This guy's trying to get on TV again. He's trying to crawl back again. He was never fully baked through. You should stop trying to do this. (laughs) Wait, wait. How... How will he like through a talk show? Of some I, I, you know what, Ben? What is... I looked no further because I was so shocked. <laughs> I got spooked right off the internet. I couldn't even believe it. That Do is you think crazy. he's? Does this mean he's blown through his Tonight Show money finally? <laughs> he's oh, he's, ha- he's had to sell all his cars. Jay Leno <laughs> returns to comedy host to a comedy hosting gig, taking on a syndicated "You Bet Your Life" revival. Oh. Uh. Oh, oh boy. my God! You know what? All I gotta say about that is this. What are you talking about? <laughs> what are you talking about? I got you know I got the soundboard is like the worst and best thing to happen to this show. What are you talking about? <laughs> there we go. Oh, get ready! <laughs> so season four, baby. We are yes, yeah, season four. Things are changing. Like right off the bat, let's really quickly mention that the theme song of the show slightly changes. It's a little more tinny and eightiesy, and like the sort of there was like an oeuvre movement to the the older theme that has now been sort of excised. It's true. We we have a new season, which means we get some of these slight tweaks, <laughs> like. The remix of the intro. There's there's also a couple of little choice new scenes peppered into the montage of the credits, and, which yep. 
And did you notice oh. the font as well? There used to be that that chunky like eighties font where it looks like the police siren is like wailing on it. Yeah. yeah now yeah, it's yeah. back to the tasteful yellow font from the earlier seasons. I was when I when I saw the theme song, I was just like, Oh, I missed this show. Yep. You know, like I just <laughs> yep, missed yep. it. Yeah. You know what though? I have to say, you're sitting here talking about this theme song though. Uh what you played just now at the top of this program, not what yeah. not what I heard last night. No, not at all. The, no. what, what what I just played was a a a, a fan a fan made this. Oh, uh, is theme that? For oh, us. I thought it was yeah. a new T.J. Hooker thing. No, oh, no, very no, this cool. Is, uh, 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 a name forgotten. Our, who did this? It's for, our fan. Yeah, the our one guy fan did this. He did yeah. a great job. It bang up job. I love it. Editing in like hit the reds. It's a it's a beautiful theme for this podcast, which is different. Well done from the theme to TJ Hooker. Um, so now they can't get us. <laughs> yeah, I believe in the power of chunky guitars. <laughs> uh, so again, we're you know night vigil. I think we someone might have mentioned it already. We're, you know, we're gathered here to discuss this episode of the original air date of October thirteenth, nineteen eighty four, and it's. Der- it's directed by Winrich Kolbe, who you might know as the director of the series finale of TNG. Yeah. Um, oh. Oh. Mm-hmm. At the time of this recording, he also directed whatever the most recent episode of the Nexus was. Uh, the the uh, where Worf is trying to fucking kind of adopt that kid who's an orphan. Oh right. <laughs> His mom oh. gets like blown to pieces, and he's yes. orphaned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, Worf's like, how about you come to my Klingon house? That guy also directed that episode. I have all these little celebrations I do with kids when I kill their parents. (laughs) (laughs) He he is a big Star Trek director. Uh, 16 TNG, 18 Voyager, 13 DS9, only one Enterprise. And mm. one of the Voyager episodes he directed was the first one, the series premiere caretaker. Ooh. And he was involved in casting and was one of the few, you know, one of the staff members that pushed for a female captain against Paramount's wishes. That's pretty mm. fucking cool. So and the it's, pilot it's, it's, for Voyager yeah. kind of rules, actually. I watched that recently. I haven't seen it, but but you know, all these progressive values in Star Trek and pushing for for a female captain, and then he he's does this one uh actually i think he does like three more of these uh tj hooker episodes just two more episodes of tj hooker including an upcoming uh sharon stone episode Ooh. but I, I it's just funny that he goes he does star trek and then uh uh, uh you know tj hooker which is very fascist we could say that yeah, yeah. i think so well you I, know I, a paycheck especially a paycheck. After this premiere, we can certainly say that. Uh, uh, Eric, I, I, I got to say, uh, uh, this director and writer combo uh, to kick off the new season, I don't believe we have seen this yet. You know, we're, we're, uh, we got used to our Neufelds and our uh, whatnots of, of, of uh, uh, Sigmunds. Uh, Sigmund this, Neufeld these, Jr., come on, show yes. some respect. <laughs> well, you know, I mean... This is a whole uh, fresh start here. Sure. You know, my skin's broken. I, I, mm-hmm. I'm, come on, I, I can only come up with so much here off the top of my dome. But uh, yeah, this is a this is a new combo. I think it helps contribute to some of the freshness that I I detect off this uh, this season premiere. There's a, there's a lot of new stuff happening. The writing, yeah, it, the it writing, I have fast. to the writing, I have to say, really uh, does throw in a lot of cool tricks that I wasn't expecting, like. What exactly is a, a toothpick's girlfriend's name? A Jovina. Yeah, and, Jovina. Okay, but some people say Jovina. Other people I heard say that. Jofina. Yeah, Jebediah. this television episode did not decide on a name for this woman. Everybody was running with it. I, it was well, an n- incredible n- little puzzle to have in n- the middle of this movie. <laughs> like, exactly who are we talking about here? Well, when you said tri- writing tricks, you appreciated it. I was like, oh, did you, were you really impressed by the fact that when Stacy, for literally no reason in the beginning of the episode, is like, life is great, dude, <laughs> and then immediately gets shot. That's yeah. what you call dramatic irony, folks. Dude, that is like uh, McBain's partner buys the boat, and the name of the boat is the Live Forever. <laughs> <laughs> That's it's amazing because Corrigan is the one who points that out, and and he's like he, he's so depressed, and like it's a tragic thing that that was her last words. And he's like, but he pretends like it's so like meaningful about her life. <laughs> he's like, she said, 
life is great. <laughs> and she really meant it, you know? And if, like, it was, if she was depressed, she would have had it coming, you know? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's how that goes. By the way, while we're talking about the writing, it was written by Frank Telford. And Frank Telford, well, what is there to say? What Simple is there to man, tell? Born, he was born on the prairie of Iowa in the year of 1915. Wow! Get out of town. Yes, okay. yes, 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 yes. Ooh, back when I was a boy in Iowa. <laughs> <laughs> he passed so, away. He passed away in 1987 at the age of 72. And by the way, Winrich Kolbe, or however you pronounce the gentleman's name, passed away September 2012. And I just like that this show not only examines and you, you, you see, you find like, oh, there's that actor who went on to stuff, but we also, it's like a tombstone of culture. We always get the, uh, <laughs> by the time we're covering it on this show, that's most people are. By the way, so you're saying Weinrich well. Kolb died in September 2012. Mm-hmm. It's possible all these years of directing this like science fiction television and whatnot. Maybe this guy was like one of those end of the worlders from 2012. Because wasn't yeah. the date September 2012? I I don't remember if it was September, but it was certainly in 2012. Which I think, as a uh, you know, like a sci-fi cultist that this guy may have been, that would have pushed him over the edge. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like that yeah. guy that rented the van outside the garden that had all the posters and shit on. I have yes. trouble remembering March 2021. Do not ask me to go all the back way back to apocalypse number J57-QRJ2. By the way, uh this Frank uh, Telford guy, you also this is one and done hooker episode for him. I mean, he was already getting on in his years here, but he did write a lot of Gentle Ben back in the late 60s. And a good day to you, sir. (laughs) Also, two episodes of the rookies. I want to point that out because that's kind of a proto hooker show. So so this this fresh new take on TJ Hooker was written by a 70-year-old man. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Is that what we're saying? Yeah. I think that's okay. that's why it gets so racially dicey throughout. I mean, yeah, actually, that, totally. that's every episode here. So yeah. what am I saying? I mean, it potentially could be why th- there are different names for people uh, in the script. Maybe <laughs> it was written that way. <laughs> also, I do feel like uh, a character or two, uh, they don't have names. That's right. Episode. That's right. One of the major villains is is known as Big Guy. Yeah. Uh, I think that's how he's credited. Yeah. Uh, so let's there you go. let's start at the start. You know, like uh, Steve was alluding to, there there's girls going surfing, and Stacy says something like, "Look at these kids. Sun is hardly up, and they're off to catch some waves. Don't you wish you could go with them?" Corrigan's just start like like, "Oh, sure." I I do have to say that this yeah this opening scene, uh, so we've talked about music here and there with like the intro and whatnot. The the music to start mm, this episode dude. off with that. That surfing safari '80s sitcom sax. Holy I mean, shit! Woo! Oh man, it's <laughs> good stuff. It, it it puts you. It really does put you in the middle of the '80s. I gotta say, I was like the Maxwell tape guy in front of my TV, <laughs> just getting blown back by that saxophone man. It's fucking nice, and they kind of bring it back towards the end a little bit too. Um, so I want to ask you guys, but this this scene here, the scene where Stacy's going to be killed, and her and Corrigan have a brief <laughs> exchange after they get this flat tire. I'm going to play a TJ Clipper, and uh, we'll discuss and go through what exactly do they mean here. Gee, I told maintenance to check that slow leak. We'll stop at a gas station. Just coffee? I don't know. I skipped breakfast. Feel like a croissant this morning? Uh, watch your language. <laughs> Just coffee's fine. <laughs> okay, so is, was a croissant a sex move in the eighties? Was it? Is it? Is it frou frou or like wh- I, what? are we getting I, I at? I think it's frou frou. Yeah. If I had to guess. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. Like. Or I wouldn't be like ordering a, that fruity baked. But it's. A, but it's also like I didn't have breakfast. I'm sort of unsure about having coffee on this empty stomach. Oh, do you want a croissant? Oh, that's frou frou. No, thank you. Get me fucking black coffee. I'm a man, and I'm gonna <laughs> ruin my gut. Is is that? I guess is that what's call, going on here? Call it what it is, Stacy. A European pop tart. Okay, <laughs> just say what it is without the frosting. I don't. Do they make them with frosting? That'd be delicious. <laughs> well, because it was before our weird 
um, post 9-11, like hatred of the French. So it oh, can't no, be but that. But, yeah. but no, we've we've hated the French forever, folks. Come on. But in yeah, pop yeah, culture I, like that, like yeah. with like, mm-hmm. you know, freedom fries and whatnot. Well, not freedom fries specifically, but we were always like, "Oh, these Snooty. freaking frogs!" Yeah, I guess that's that. true. Yeah, yeah so maybe it's, it, so. I guess maybe it could be that too. Yeah, like then do you have a different take? Uh, my, my, my. I mean, I, again, I, I'm picturing you know what does, a 70 year old man. This guy probably fought in the war. <laughs> you know, what are you the, thinking the French like pussy? <laughs> 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 well, you know, he could like the look of a croissant is very sort yeah. of, yeah. you know, a yeah. uh, uh, private private part. I would need, you know, that. I think uh, <laughs> pretty sure Georgia O'Keefe has painted croissants before. I would do it with a croissant. Yes, there is the Georgia O'Keefe Museum in Arizona and then there's a the Georgia O'Keefe. Croissant Museum in France, which it has all her croissant paintings. Ben, you could really be a star of the erotic baking poetry scene with what you're talking about here. There's some real good stuff. Uh, I do well, uh, love. So why is Corrigan in such a shitty mood? I think that's you know question. Skip breakfast. Oh, he's just skip breakfast. He had a bad I, you know, fucking yeah. morning. Mm-hmm, I guess Old so. lady Corrigan was giving him shit when he got out. Like. If you're not going to propose to me, you piece of shit, don't bother coming back. (laughs) It was your job to get the eggs, you bastard. (laughs) I'm telling you, I'm going to shift in in five minutes. He's up at dawn. He's got to go look at all these surfer babes yeah. wishing he was out catching some waves. How much longer is of... your brother going to be sleeping in the basement? <laughs> Man, I actually forget what the relationship status with Corrigan. I think he's still single. Mm. I think he's divorced. I think everyone's That's divorced. Wow, they let show, James yeah. Darren stay single on this show? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Have you guys talked he, about he he's was... on um, Deep Space Nine? Oh, oh really? No, oh, yeah. I don't, I'm not too familiar. No. Sort of later in the series, he's like a semi, you know, recurring guest role. As they put Vic, a bunch of shit on his face, Vic or? Fontaine. No, he because what it is is what? he's in like a hologram program that they frequent, oh, or Vic Hollow Fontaine? Suite as they call it on DS. What was his name again? Vic Fontaine was the character's name. It sounds and like he was basically guy. doing like a Bobby Darren like <laughs> nightclub routine. Oh, fun! Yeah. Huh. It's when, pretty funny. Yeah, no, I had no idea. In that clip, when the vo- when the uh, volume goes up all of a sudden, that is a switch of perspective to the car where, thank God, I cheered when I saw his name in the credits. Larry Flash Jenkins. Yeah, portraying Toothpick. Of of Fletch and uh, Ferris Ooh. Bueller's Day Off. That's right. Mm-hmm. Uh, yep. He's fant- he, uh, Rest in peace. He died very recently. 2019, um, yes, yeah. 63 years old. Um, again, you know, this is... Time comes for us all, dude. The Reaper comes knocking for everybody. Exactly. Well, you know, just walking amongst the tombstones That's here. why you got to talk about <laughs> TJ Hooker now, because you might not be able to talk about it tomorrow. That's true. And, you know, <laughs> William Shatner won't do the show, by the way. He says he doesn't do podcasts. Oh, wow. No, uh, well, when his, when his uh, <laughs> bank account gets low enough, he'll start doing some podcasts. I can't Does wait he make cameos? I don't think so, but it would be great if he <laughs> oh, did, right? That's oh, kind of stunning. He doesn't. That ham, he doesn't do cameos. Wow. It's unbelievable. Very yeah, strange. it is. I've, what? Wow. But he does have a very odd relationship with the internet at the same time which yeah. could be a, a, an entire hooked on tj hooker episode unto itself oh, Isn't that'd be he great. like wasn't he like mildly pro trump yeah kind of not pro I, don't, trump, I don't remember sort of like, i know he, he, he just constantly hates cancel culture and oh is yeah. that yeah. what it is okay well what i mostly see is he constantly like picks fights with autistic people or something like <laughs> what? like people like what? trying to do like autistic rights or something i have no idea here's the thing is like when william shatner f- shows up at my twitter feed it is 12 hours into a conversation i have no idea what is going on <laughs> those sons of bitches Wow. They've got it too good, those autistic kids. <laughs> you know, he He's hates a, he, cancel yeah. culture because someone probably told him that, like, Kirk definitely would have been canceled. And he got oh, sure. fucking furious about it. <laughs> How dare they? 
Uh, <laughs> but here, you know, Stacy's about to get canceled with a bullet right here. <laughs> she's walks- going to get canceled. Yeah, she walks in and, and doesn't know, you know, doesn't pay any mind to the giant hulking white guy with a gun that is uh, <laughs> right in front. Like from her perspective, I feel like okay, the guy's. I guess the cashier's back was there, so yeah. it's possible she missed it, but. It's it, this is a pretty great opening of this guy just like the the moment of hesitation between the two of them and this big dude known as big guy just shoots her down. It's it's pr- oh no it, it's it's great because she gets she gets annihilated and you see toothpick as she, as she's going into the store toothpick is looking nervous and it's like oh he's in on something like, now he's a black guy in America he sees two cops pull up he's. You, you get a little nervous, I think, is the idea. Yep, later. totally. Well, also, I mean, this guy was in the middle of doing a crime, though, Steve. Well, yes, for sure. It's uh, incredible it's, that, like, he is that, like... Uh, it, Toothpick is so much more... Like, the, the fact that Big Guy is just Big Guy kind of makes sense, but it's also weird that he's the main villain. Like, he's the one that actually shoots uh, Stacy, whereas, like, Toothpick is, like, kind of the main villain character. Yeah, yeah, it's weird. Know, like this, the like big guy doesn't have as many scenes as Toothpick does. He's like in the shadows, but he's the murderer. And like, focus on that because he's a crazy like boomer guy almost. You never find out his name. Meanwhile, you've, it's you you wild. you know Toothpick's name, and then you know his you know the name of Toothpick on the street or whatever. Then you have the his real name, which is like four names put together. So. You know a lot about Toothpick, but nothing about the main guy that's actually pushing Toothpick into these crimes. Except that, like, multiple times a day, he goes to that, like, fucking derelict cafeteria food, like, fucking <laughs> two to three times food a day. hall thing. Two to yeah. three. I mean, like, we'll have to talk about it. But, I mean, that's how he gets caught. It's because, like, he's just always going to this shit-ass <laughs> greasy spoon. He's also very stupid, I think. He talks like a yeah. Neanderthal. Like, when he's, like, they're like at some point somebody's like, "Oh my god, you shot another cop." He's like, "Yeah, I did. I do good. Oh, Kill yeah, cop no. good." Oh, I I have it somewhere in my notes, but the way he says the line, you're totally right. It's weird as hell. It's like I mean, oh. he he likes killing cops. He does, you know. And mm-hmm. it's weird that he's, he he's got the bloodlust. He just looks like one of like the random no ma'am guys from Married with Children. <laughs> like he doesn't have really any distinct look other than the fact that he is a big guy. Well, Steve can tell you he's got a distinct look, right, that, Steve? That's right. Excuse this is a, a character actor, Pepper Martin. A, A plus name. Yep. Uh, yes. uh, Pepper Martin, uh, infamous uh, in one of my favorite scenes in any movie. Uh, he bullies Clark Kent in Superman 2 after he loses his powers, throws him into a jukebox because he's just like, I don't know, he's a string bean, even though he's like that jacked out, out of his mind. <laughs> yeah. yeah, That's him? And... Yes, and then it Chris is. Reeve, Superman showing he's not a benevolent god when he gets his powers back, decides to fly back to Alaska just to show this guy how, uh, just just to zing this dude by saying, <laughs> I've sure. never seen garbage eat garbage before. And you know he's trying that on the fly in, right? He's just like, I never saw shit eat. No, that's a thing. <laughs> Come on, Clark, use your super brain. <laughs> Come up with the super zinger. Oh, I've got it. Oh, look at that meatloaf ass you got, you meatloaf. <laughs> <laughs> they definitely serve ass meatloaf at that weird auto oh, market totally. that this guy goes to. That fucking shitty <laughs> diner is kind of as bad as where this fucking dude is hanging out in this episode. This yes. cafeteria. <laughs> so shame on Stacy for not seeing this big galoot with the gun pointed directly at this cat. I mean, she just walks right by yeah. this guy. I I guess she's got her mind set on croissants or something. <laughs> well, she's loving life. I think the moral of this specific episode is that don't think life's great. You know, mm, life yeah. will just fucking rub your face in it in a sec. Yeah, you got to keep your fucking guard up at all times. You can never be comfortable in public. Or like the uh, the the counter clerk says, you, he just he didn't say anything. He just he cut her down. He didn't say anything. He he, he, just, he just cut her down. Cut her down. It's, that's C- a cut great, her down. Great line cut her delivery. down. <laughs> cut her down. What is this? A Faulkner novel? I know exactly. <laughs> I, I think we need something for our soundboard. Oh yeah. You oh. better get to. I bet. I too bad I didn't clip it. Cabin. Um. The the big guy line. I just found it. The uh, 
Toothpick goes, you shot another cop, to which as Toothpick starts pulling away, Big Guy goes, isn't that something? <laughs> <laughs> he does like a fucking slow motion Ernest Borgnine laugh. Sick, dude. <laughs> Pepper Martin, A+. Plus. Yeah, before he gets a, like a ball and paddle to play with for the rest of the day. <laughs> Are we sure that he's not also a, like a 1920s baseball player? Oh, <laughs> yeah, totally. That, that does sound yeah. like a fucking old timey <laughs> baseball nickname. That or a jazz drummer. So, so guys, <laughs> the second the bullet pierces Stacy's uniform, Hooker's hunch stands up on all fours and pulsates <laughs> oh. and tingles. And he's suddenly he's on the scene within seconds. I mean, Corrigan loses the guy, gets the plates. The plates turn out to be a dead end because they're stolen plates and they don't match the car. But, but hookers there instantaneously and at her side. Oh yeah. yeah. It's weird. Oh, f- for Adam 30 immediately <laughs> on the scene, we, we get not to be overlooked. William Shatner doing his own stunt work here, coming in with a beautiful hydroplane slide of the car right into like the parking space out oh. in front of this shitty deli. Yeah. And man, they, he screeches to a halt and just scurries right inside, <laughs> guns blazing. He's ready. It this is, is crazy. high octane. He's, it's it's that rodent uh, swagger he's got. It's, <laughs> it's fast. He yells at somebody on the way in. It's a great Shatner. Get back from there. <laughs> I do love that you guys talk about his run as much as you do because it's so important. <laughs> it's so weird looking. It just, it just, he just moves his little body like his little. He's all elbows when he's running. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I yeah. think it's he's also Steve. Every single moment he's running, he's distracted by oh my god! Like I have to be careful how I run because if the wind hits this thing the wrong way, this piece is coming <laughs> right off. It's not just that though. It's when he runs. There's a sense that like a part of his body is trying to break away from him. <laughs> like he always is like trying to hold in a part of himself while running. Because it seems to want to escape his being. And yeah, he's very clenched. Sometimes he's definitely clenched. Sometimes it's the hair. I assume sometimes the hair is the one that escapes, but it's like also a rib cage just wants out at some point. I assume the liver needs some vacation. Two things I was a little upset about that were missing from this episode. One, no one runs onto a roof. I mean, what the fuck am I watching? Yeah, that's fucked up. Um, and two, no car like drives into a bunch of barrels for no reason. It gets covered in water. It it is it is very sparse on the whole car chase thing. They constantly lose them this week. I guess this gives <laughs> us more time to just deal with Stacy at the hospital. Yes, that's true. Which is kind of where we go next. But after after the great line of Hooker being like, "Who shot her?" Like uh, the guy who shot her, and Corgan's like, "He's gone." And Hooker says. Whoever he is, I want him. Oh, fuck yeah, yeah dude. Oh, that's a line. That is wow, a line. you are blown into that commercial mm-hmm. break. What I, a I fucking love, black outline. I love how this episode kind of should be Corrigan's episode, which is just like, yes. you know, like, oh, Corrigan, he let his partner down, and it's like, I got to get this guy. But then William Shatner's like, hey, nice script. Let me just <laughs> mark it up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, Steve, don't you know he was there when she was born? Oh, mm-hmm. I, creepily. I, I was there between your mother's legs, just staring down at you coming out. I was there. I just want to remind you, he says it like six times in this it episode. It is creepy as fuck. I pulled her out of her mother's vagina, and I looked up at the mother, and I said, her name is Stacy. <laughs> She's going to be a hell of a cop. <laughs> do you think like it's gonna fucking turn out like like you know the series finale of tj hooker in actuality like hooker slept with her mother mm. and oh, hooker's would, the fucking biological father of stacy richard heard being cucked for like 30 <laughs> yep. years that'd be fucking great <laughs> stacy, I, I don't stacy. know but help me take this hair piece off <laughs> <laughs> I'm the captain now. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of, yeah, the captain, Captain Mr. Wilhelm, which is uh, Stacy Sheridan's father. Uh, Wigelm. Uh, yeah. Dude, it is the fucking battle of the wigs on this show between this guy <laughs> and fucking Shatner, man. It is. It, he's definitely wearing a <laughs> helmet. Oh, yeah. my God. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> 
I think his name is Dennis Sheridan, if mm-hmm. I remember right. We always just call him Captain Mister Wilhelm. In this here. episode, though, like Hooker, uh, I think calls him by his first name at the hospital at one point. Oh shit! Um, I should have paid attention. Were they? Were, what's this? What's the backstory here, folks? Were they partners back in the day? Is that how that worked? And like they were buds? They or, were. And Ben, correct me if I'm wrong. It seemed like it was always kind of like a boss relationship, but I I, I cannot recall specifically. Uh, I don't know if they've gone into too much detail about what their relationship was in the past when Hooker was a detective in the department. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, they do go back. There is a lot of history there. Um, I mean, apparently TJ was present with uh, the birth. He shoved the doctor aside and said, I'll handle this. <laughs> you know, so like he's there's definitely some history Um but yeah, we're we're at the community hospital. We we haven't changed hospitals this season, which is something that uh, kind of has happened. We've kind of going season to season. They seem to, uh, you know, Los Santos respawns a new hospital. But we're <laughs> we're we're going strong with the same hospital from season three, the community hospital. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, obviously, uh, Captain Sheridan, Captain Mister Wilhelm, uh, is present. Stacy is in. Uh, rough shape yes, right now. Yes, and I have a TJ Clipper of of Richard Hurd's big moment. I mean, this is kind of his only scene, and he's really oh. swinging for the fences. So yes, they do give him a monologue, which it sounds like you have clipped. That's right. Let's take a listen. Oh. Doctor, I uh, I had a chance to think this through while I was driving over here, and uh, if there are any uh, decisions that I have to make, I. I appreciate knowing it as soon as possible. Dennis. It was Dennis. Yeah, it's funny. Uh, it's funny how the mind works. I, uh, I see her like, you know, when she was about 11, uh, she broke her arm on the playground at school. Uh, you know, there was nobody around, so uh, I had to pick her up, take her in, have the uh, cast put on. I, I I remember her, you know, sitting uh, next to me in the car afterwards and thinking, uh, such a hell of a big cast with such a small kid. Yeah. What are you talking about? <laughs> 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 well played my, my little addition <laughs> uh, <laughs> he gets there man he fucking nailed it yeah swinging for the fence he was good yeah That's, oh my it's god a very, it's a very dramatic way to say you got pretty bad health care <laughs> like they just gave her a really big cast it wasn't really fit to the thing it was humongous i don't know why <laughs> she she never healed quite right <laughs> do you notice she's got a fucked up arm <laughs> I do horse cast on it. I, I do, but I love the beginning part of that. Yes. He's like, I, I've, I've been thinking this over, Doc. I want to know if I have to make decisions uh, involving my near dead daughter. Uh, Just pull the, uh, yeah. fucking pull the plug, dude. That's what he's talking about. Put it he's, don't hold it back. It. he's ready to do it the second they're like, uh, she might not. That's enough. That's enough. Let's wrap it up. Yep. What What's funny? You know, not funny, but I guess it's kind of funny if you're <laughs> twisted. Uh, the doctor says that she's critical. <laughs> Only one bullet hit her, and it was in the chest. The bullet is in the wall of her heart. And when she fell, she also got a brain concussion, shock, and now is in a coma in addition to everything else. Wow, that's a fucking rough situation. And yep. both those yep. things are going to kill her, it seems, as the doctor is explaining uh, why she's in critical care. And then, of course, very soon after this, we find out that these are not normal bullets. These no, are, they're, oh, they're not. Oh, I've, no. I've got a lengthy clipper on the whole bullet talk, <laughs> which is a, a fun, fun moment coming up shortly. But Hooker now wants a guard on Stacy 24-7. Nobody gets in or out type of shit. And I and need the name f- of the scum who pulled the trigger. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. And and we around here is when we find out those plates were were bogus. So now they theorize about the cop killer bullet. So what let's spend about 90 seconds listening to that. <laughs> the lab come up with anything we can use? Maybe one of the slugs went into a wall by the refrigerator. The lab man who dug it out said that it was armor pierced. Cop killers. <laughs> oh no. That explains why the bullet went through Stacy's vest. Well, sure. 
He capped off a few at me. One of them went right through two sides of a dumpster. He put in an order for that animal. He wanted to kill a cop. Yeah, and I made it easier for him. What are you talking about? I should have gone into that <laughs> shop with her. Hey, Jim, we stopped there every morning. Yeah, we stopped there every morning, and only one of us went in. Sure. But I forgot for just five minutes that the uniform is a target, no matter where you go. I forgot my partner is a target. How could you? Sure. And I let her walk through that door alone. You fucked up, dude. Bad move. How could you? Those super slugs might work for us. A lot of gun stores don't carry them. <laughs> and most of them that do are very careful about who they sell them to. I popped an armed robber out here a couple of years ago who's carrying a dozen clips of armor-piercing bullets. He never told me where he got them. He live out this way? No. He lives in San Quentin now. But his girlfriend works out here, and she scores on the street every morning. And the license plate to that gray sedan was grabbed out in this neighborhood. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. There she so is. So this isn't from Lethal there Weapon 3? He's, he's talking about her, yeah. and they spot her instantly. I just think that this is investigation funny. is fantastic. It's just like very loose shit that just barely hangs together. And it's but like, James Darren, James Darren has his little girl in a cast monologue, and he just doesn't nail it like the other guy does. Oh, <laughs> no. he swings, he swings for the fences, uh, pops it up. I think. <laughs> also, not the best. Like his sort of reasoning is is doesn't make sense where, where it's like and i forgot about it for five minutes yeah it's like what what are you talking about like, <laughs> like she should you know like be able to go someplace <laughs> by herself like it's a weird i wasn't b by her side every fucking second exactly it, yeah it's yeah. a weird thing where it's like is this about cops and partners or is this like we're gonna be really weird because she's a female officer no, yeah. like, like she needs to be protected. Or if you're shot in a shitty deli, God wants you to die in a shitty deli. <laughs> it wasn't some plan. It wasn't some conspiracy. God just planned to shoot you in what looks like the worst deli ever constructed. Yes. I don't even see a case. I, I, I don't see a, a, a cheddar block. I'm not seeing mm -hmm. any fucking boar's head. <laughs> you you need you need a cheddar block for sure. Just at are least we, one cheddar block. Are we specifically told that this is a deli sandwich shop? Oh, yeah. a sandwich shop. A sandwich oh, I thought shop. it was like a convenience store. But to be, I mean, they are stopping there in the morning. There was a mention of croissants. Maybe they don't veer into the cold cuts, Chris. It looks like they boosted like from like a a a, a price shop or some like a, a, a supermarket that went out of business. Because it's just this little, like, there's oranges and croissants in this little, like, refrigerated basket that Heather Locklear <laughs> mm -hmm. is, like, rummaging yeah. through. Like, it's, it's a real the <laughs> discount bin at the fucking, like, car wash CDs fucking tray. It, it's a... a <laughs> Instead of a bodega, it's a bodeg don't, right? <laughs> it's a don't dega. <laughs> Easily By one the of the worst places to die. Easily. Another one actually I want to... I want to focus on in that clip too is is TJ Hooker says he popped an iron robber out in that neighborhood. Um, now I guess is I I guess because this is the guy that would buy I guess the armored piercing rounds and that's yeah. how he puts it all together. But the term of iron robber that is is he now is that the term for someone using armor piercing rounds in mm. a robbery? Is that is he a gun thief? Like I think maybe yeah, it's like a, it's term. a robber who uses a gun whilst robbing. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, the, I want a glossary. Someone should put out like a um, like a dictionary of every TJ Hooker ism and all the cop we're, talk. We're we're also the, potentially veering into like again, the guy was born in the teens that wrote this. <laughs> this this could be like you know old Doc Washburn's <laughs> drop seam. You know, it's like this is like old timey like medicine terms here. You know, like well, why did anyone this is, edit it? Yeah, <laughs> well, I popped an iron robber and then I ran out a a, a, fo a phony elixir uh, wagon out of town. <laughs> uh, bad news, Hooker. Uh, Stacy has come down with a case of diphtheria on top of the bullet. <laughs> uh, yeah, like uh, this is this is like con constable shit, you know, like throwing the baton in the street corner, like well. I don't know. I'd be more excited by the idea that when he says iron robbers, it's like a bunch of thieves with like masks and like money sacks over their yeah. shoulders going into an iron mine. <laughs> 
and just <laughs> fucking like loading up on pieces of iron and dragging like Beagle them Boy out. shit. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Beagle Boys. Yeah, the Beagle Boys were real iron robbers, I bet. I robbing iron, the least profitable criminal enterprise. <laughs> no, 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 no. The, I don't want no precious metals. Everyone's looking for that. <laughs> Look, we need McDonald's money, okay? Not much. Just enough Look, to afford six, McDonald's. Six so let's go tons of this is nine dollars. <laughs> yeah, let's go break our backs hauling six tons. The McDonald's just uh, unveiled an iron ore menu ooh. instead of a dollar menu. I love Ooh. the sketch that uh, uh, James Darren gets of Big Guy, and like, uh, or, or, or Hooker heads too. It's like, oh, the the convenience store guy sat down and got a sketch of the guy, and uh, James. It, it's a perfect like a tracing of this guy's face. <laughs> like they got fucking Norman Rockwell to come down and sit with this dude for two minutes, and then it's just uh, James was like, yeah, it's pretty good. I'm like, that's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> It, this, it, sir, is a Wall Street Journal stipple portrait of this guy. I, You're right, Steve. Great. The show should be, the episode should be about that guy and mm-hmm. how good he got it. It's the best police sketch ever drawn. So, so, by the way, now Hooker finds this girl that used to be with this iron robber that he popped. And uh, I love she thought, the fact yeah. also, sorry, but. He has all these details in his head, like, oh, uh, th- I remember way back years ago, I busted this dude for a similar thing. Oh, he's definitely at this jail now. His girlfriend, who I still remember, definitely lives here. Like, it's just. And there she is right yeah, now. Like, the and knowledge that he is. holds in his head is so fucking insane. It, it really is. I mean, he's better than Sherlock Holmes. That's for certain. <laughs> the way that Hooker says, like, he had 12 clips on him and like he was an iron rod. Like I caught him out on these streets and made it sound like he's one of those like water bottle guys, but with clips of cop killer bullets. Like he just had a <laughs> bag slugs. of 12 fucking clips ready to go. By the way, I Googled iron robbers. Nothing Ooh. came up. Yeah. So I don't know what old Pappy Van Winkle that wrote this teleplay was fucking thinking. It's from before the internet. (laughs) Uh, So this is an interesting moment where Hooker takes two joints away from this poor woman, um, you know, and threatens to book her for possession unless she can help him out. And if so, he's going to help transfer the boyfriend to a closer prison. In what world does it work like this? It's fucking bullshit. It's fucking bullshit. It's I, a total yeah. because when when she he throws her her joint when he takes her joints she knows she's never seeing this dude ever again. Yep. How much grass you got in there? He says, "Fucking great." Oh, good yeah. line. And then he keeps it. And he's later he's later interrogated by Internal <laughs> Affairs, thankfully, about what he did with it. But we never see. But they kept it. I'm wondering. He is, says is there- he says that he he. Threw it down a toilet in the park bathroom. Yes. Now, but is there a world where TJ and Romano are getting mm-hmm. dank in the squad car? I bet you anything, dude. Hooker is obnoxious to be high with. Yeah. I, I went home oh, and course. I smoked that shit. I smoked <laughs> it all up. Yeah, two joints. One for me and one for Miles. Miles Davis. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't get any cooler. <laughs> Thanks, TJ. He's actually there with him. <laughs> well, you know, oh. don't put it past Miles Davis to make a cameo in an '80s cop show. That's I point. busted him in the park for public indecency. He was playing <laughs> jazz music. <laughs> <laughs> So she reveals that, like, this place, Lucky Loans, is where her boyfriend used to get the super slugs. Yeah. Which, I mean, where's the grass? Super slugs, Lucky Loans, you know. (laughs) I I gotta say, that's three for three right there. Uh, And it it got me thinking about, this is just a little, we didn't have much that we... uh, the one our one fan of the show knows mm-hmm. that uh, uh, we like to point out signage in the world of uh, T.J. Hooker in Los Santos stand in for Los Angeles. And uh, this was this is pretty brief. But as we were on our way to Lucky Loans, we quickly go by a street sign that I think says 
I paused it and kind of like looked at it. I think it's word in place. But if you you go by it quickly yep. and it looks like it says heroin. Yes, place. holy shit! I thought the exact same thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I thought the exact yes. same thing. That's crazy. Which I'm like, <laughs> okay, now we're we're talking now. Hooker yeah. is he is gonna go bust some perps on heroin. Yeah. Oh place. no, I'm in a really bad part of town. Heroin place. <laughs> we gotta stop selling heroin here. <laughs> it's yeah, we have to go. Who shows up. We have to go to Lucky Loans where we're going to hang out with like Dennis Hopper's ex fixer or something. Like this oh, guy man, looks this like scene. he's been through the ringer. <laughs> I'm sure he is. He's, you know, he's he's he, he's now he's, selling he's selling super slugs. I mean, this guy's at his wits' end. Well, he's he's about to get put through the TJ ringer in a second here because we're we're getting a double dose of sleaze policing mm-hmm. with uh, TJ's interrogation of this guy. Oh, speak, he... speaking of which, you want to listen oh, to it? Oh, yeah. Oh, are you telling me you have this clipped? <laughs> I, I got at least part of it clipped. Oh, hit us. If you guys interested in buying something, I give you my regular police discount. 20 up, 10% off. Otherwise, you get out of my store, you're bad for business. Hey, man, keep your hands off me. Hooker, you can't do this. I'm not doing it. No, you got no rights. Don't give me my rights. I got a police officer with a slug jammed up against your heart. I don't want to hear about your rights. Think about it, Hooker. This may blow our chances, and it isn't really going to help Stacy. <laughs> so there you go. That's TJ Hooker assaulting someone. There's mm-hmm. also another line around there where he goes, I don't have time to shuck and jive. <laughs> like to this fucking pawn store owner. Yeah, I've got another brief uh, clipper. Let's see it's let's see if it's in there. This is when he uh he decides to totally bust this guy uh completely. I sold them both 45s. Two 45s. No waiting period. No ID check. No record clearance. You're going to jail, gun dealer. Could you imagine a world today where a gun dealer would go to jail? No. no. And I can't Not imagine a line of dialogue like that being uttered on television. <laughs> well, that was the world that Beto O'Rourke wanted to, wanted to build for us guys. He was going <laughs> to do but it. At the same time, Chris, it's so fascinating that like a hard-nosed cop like TJ Hooker views... This is bad at all. Now, I, you know, I'm sure there's some cops that do view uh, gun sale loopholes as a bad thing, but everything in the media tells me otherwise. Well, they're into regulation as long as it doesn't apply to them. So mm. that's, I mean, so yeah, I can see why he would be a little angry at this. Hooker is absolutely furious in this scene. I don't think we can sort of, we're leading into a commercial break here. And, uh, uh, you know, he's just the crescendo of his rage, I think, is is important for this because uh, it is definitely something that continues through this episode. T.J. Hooker is alternating between just like florid faced sweating, like choking the life out of criminals. (laughs) And then, you know, as soon as he kind of reaches a boiling point, it comes down and he goes to his night vigil, you know, and he makes he makes sure Stacy's OK. And then he goes ready to choke another criminal in the next. <laughs> it's just like it's this like hot and cold that uh, it keeps you, you know, well, it, it keeps you watching because he's a psychopath. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, because even yeah, because um, uh, Romano and Corrigan are just like, you're going to blow the case by acting like an asshole. Like, yeah, you've got the. We got the lead we needed. You're you're never going to be able to hold this guy in the bullshit charges you have. He's like, I want him rotting in a jail cell. And then the next day, of course, Internal Affairs is like, um, you want to talk for a little bit? <laughs> <laughs> My favorite thing with that is that he's not only he's like, I want him in a jail tonight and I don't want him to shit right either. Or he's like, I don't want the toilet to work or something like that. <laughs> yeah, the plumbing. I hope the plumbing's yeah, yeah. broken or whatever that line is. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. Now, you're right, uh, Ben, that he does do his little night vigil here. And this is where the doctor gives him an update that there's now a leak in her heart and that she might mm-hmm. not survive the operation and she might die. And there's this whole like, so she'll die if you do and die if you don't <laughs> that sounds like she's dead if you say that yes, that just yes. sounds like she's dead it doesn't sound like there's any chance anywhere yeah call captain mr wilhelm get his fucking aok to fucking pull the plug you know what i mean <laughs> yeah get the speed dial out so, so you uh. both you have two options and they both end with her dying huh well she's dead then by the way when he gets to the hospital it is the single biggest moment 
of him being a total asshole in this entire episode because he walks <laughs> in and like mine is the police brutality, but the non-police br- brutality related to him being an asshole. He walks into the room and nobody is there with Heather Locklear and he runs out to the desk and he's fucking furious. And he goes, uh, I demanded that someone stay with Stacy this whole time. Why is she alone right now? And this nurse goes, I just stepped out to, and Hooker cuts her off and goes, what, to call your boyfriend? <laughs> Dude, well, shut the fuck moment. up, Hooker. The nurses must be like, oh, man, her father's a real asshole. Like, no, that's not her father. It's some other guy. That's just her- a weird older guy at her job. It's a second guy. She's got a father, and then there's a second guy. I can see how you're confused because they both have hilariously bad wigs on. You told me it was the guy with the wig. I thought that was the guy. (laughs) The one guy is definitely her father. The other guy just keeps on talking about how he saw her come out of her mother's (laughs) vagina. Just keeps on talking about it. Will not stop. Well, that's why I thought it was the father. Who else would be there? I guess his partner or his subordinate. I don't know, really. I'll be honest with you. Oh, my God. So now the next movement is we go to an amusement park before we get to the internal affairs. And uh, this is quite something. Oh. Hooker's just sitting around like he's pretending to <laughs> he's pretending to read, but he's looking around for anyone that might be a key to the underworld. Right. We uh, have TJ Hooker staked out at some kind of carnival in his civvies. Is this where uh, he fucking attacks this dude on roller skates? Oh, yes, yeah. it is. Now, the dude <laughs> on roller skates is uh, portrayed by Willard E. Pugh, who you might remember as Mayor Cusack in RoboCop 2. Yes. He's also in The Color Purple and uh, Air Force One, to name just a few things. Mm. Yeah, I was shocked when I saw him. I was like, holy fuck, the mayor from RoboCop 2. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, the mayor is, uh, he's goes by Roller in this episode. Yeah. Now. Hey, Roller, I'm looking for Toothpick. And this uh-huh. is sort of just like, TJ's just naming him Roller? Or, or does he know that there's some kid who rolls around that, because <laughs> you, you, he knows every single criminal somehow, you know? You know? He does. He does know every, and he knew to look for Roller at this carnival at night. And, and sure enough, this guy comes uh, teetering in on his uh, rather unsteadily on his uh, skates. <laughs> yeah, like if which, your nickname like, if, is if you're Roller, gonna, <laughs> yeah, you should be exactly. able to roll. Yeah, which he cannot because, uh, <laughs> unsurprisingly, this is uh, this leads to a chase. Roller takes off and Hooker. I mean, this guy could have been on rocket the guy, skates. The guy takes, <laughs> it wouldn't have mattered. Roller takes off like first. Hooker like holds this dude's arm in this weird controlling manner while he's walking and talking with him, and then Hooker like accuses him of rape. Like he can get him busted for like yeah. all these different <laughs> yes. things. Very important. And yes. then he runs away, which good move. Honestly, yeah. <laughs> I don't know this guy. He dresses a civilian. He didn't show the badge. I don't remember that happening. Definitely he did not. Oh, yeah, he never announces himself as a police officer in this episode, almost ever, especially at the <laughs> end, which is a big problem for me. Also, I think that the problem with Mr. Pugh here, he's an actor, you know, struggling in the 80s. And they're like, you can be you got to be on roller. Oh, we, we love you for this part. You got to be on roller skates. Well, I'm great at roller skates. And then cut to that <laughs> weekend. Like, fuck. All right. I got to call my little sister. She's in the roller blade, the roller skate thing. We'll figure it out together. The scene of him running away. Like they don't shoot it close. It's a it is a wide <laughs> shot, and you can tell that this guy just has no idea what he's doing. <laughs> this will be he's like th- yeah. banana peel stumbling like whoop 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 away, <laughs> while <laughs> while T J Hooker is just <laughs> you know like, doing his like huff and puff. praying for Corrigan to fucking tackle him. He's like, which mm-hmm. does happen. Yeah, the sooner God this guy answers. can tackle me, the sooner I can not be roller skating poorly anymore. It's. By the way, oh, that'll so be a TJ Vitter. You can go to our, our Twitter at TJ Hooker Podcast to see uh, the roller, it's just the whole thing, the whole thing go down. It is quite a sight. <laughs> go down. And then, oh yeah, Hooker like um, like uh, th- also. Th- so then they like they're gonna put him in like Corrigan's Jeep, his off his regular just off duty Jeep. And uh, Hooker, like, threatens with drowning him in the ocean. Like, he won't be able to, like, swim with the skates on. 
Oh, right. It's like a really brief moment. And then he gives up the location of the Carver High School is where Toothpick like went to school or whatever. Yes. Yeah, surprisingly, uh, a hooker could not keep up with the kid. Even the worst roller skater on earth, he could not keep up <laughs> and needed fucking. Uh, uh, who is it? Was it? It's Corrigan. Not Corrigan, who's who Corrigan was him. there. Uh, uh, he he tackles him. Um, not to to teach. It wasn't like they planned this. He was just there. Well, this know? is where yeah. Corrigan also says, "Hey, by the way, a hooker, IAB's sniffing around, dude. You're fucking going down if you don't stop this." Oh my god, yes, and that's when we get our internal affairs uh, scene, which is quite good and interesting. Wow, checks and balances. Remember when that was something? How um, often do they? Uh, have internal affairs on this show not so often i think maybe once a season oh okay at 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 most i would even say this is kind of a first in the sense that i feel like like he's kind of gotten his methods questioned by other detectives or you know sometimes uh captain mr wilhelm but this I feel like this is the first time he really got the business, it's you know, a real from dressing down. And I, yeah, I don't think that yeah. has actually happened before. Ooh, to a to a way that uh, there was one line where it was almost like the show stepping out of itself and like almost acknowledging that this guy is, you know, he's he's a fascist cop. <laughs> you know, like <laughs> the way that these guys were like, you know, uh, 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 questioning him. Uh, and his methods. You know what? Um, Let's just listen to the entire thing. How about <laughs> that? How about that'll that? eat some time. Sure. The bartender where Lecha Martinez works said you chased her down and copped her marijuana. <laughs> What'd you do with it? I flushed uh, it down a park. Smoked it. That was contraband. And it was evidence in what could have been a good arrest. Lecha had some seeds and some sticks and a couple of chimes. No deputy DA in the city is going to go to court. Oh, yeah. Hooker knows his good weed. And it was a waste weed. of time and taxpayer <laughs> money to cite or arrest her, and you know it. Maybe it was That's a waste of time because so you were in a hurry to get to Lucky Loans. My information is that when you got there, you beat the hell out of the gun dealer. That isn't true. Then to cover yourself, you had Officer Romano and Corrigan take Robinson in on a misdemeanor firearms charge. You really expect that to stand up in court? Hmm. Gentlemen, we seem to be on a different wavelength here. Robinson violated <laughs> the law, and he was arrested and booked. You did hit him. He swung at me, and I stopped him. Yeah, huh? He also saw the bullets that took down a police officer. It doesn't bother you that Robinson's attorney is filing a police brutality and false arrest suit against you and the city, and that the deputy city attorney says he can't prosecute because of your illegal search and seizure? No, that doesn't bother me. (laughs) And if the deputy CA wants to throw this case out, let that sucker walk, I'll open the door and kick him all the way down to the bricks. Because I already got what I want. Information that'll help me take down the guy who shot Officer Sheridan. And that's what's important. Oh. You're not taking down Listen, anyone. You're a police officer. Days to wrap <laughs> then I'll come back and I'll face Robinson, his lawyer, or whatever. Maybe you should whatever. Quit whatever. Behind, <laughs> of course, it doesn't bother me. I've got all this weed. Investigation into the assault on Stacy Sheridan. From now on, it's out of your hands. You're not to go near it. <laughs> Off the case. Hooker out. <laughs> Oof. Yeah, he does not like that one bit. Storm is the That's fuck the smartest out of thing I've heard. Yeah, this guy's mm-hmm. way too emotionally involved to be anywhere near this case. Mm-hmm. By the way, the guy playing the internal affairs detective, Alan Williams, was Ted in previous We Ate Movies episode, Hot to Trot, which oh, I don't wow. remember him in, but I oh. saw it there, and that's one of his very you know few credits. Not everyone. That was the talking horse movie on. with Bobcat. Yes, it was no. with Dabney he's, Coleman. He's also a big. He's a main character in Lou Grant. Uh, R.I.P. No. Ed Asner. Oh man, yeah. yeah, wasn't that something? That sucked. What a life! Mm-hmm. Life well we lived. A, and around here, we got a brief scene where Pepper Martin brings Chinese food to the to the gang here, and <laughs> she'll be dead soon. <laughs> Pepper Martin. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny that we even bother to check in on them. I'd imagine in the street piece, if you watch this on Daily Motion or something, that might have been excised. Oh, what? This is the scene whole- of them hanging out. And he's like. I ordered a yeah. bunch of Chinese food as <laughs> as per the rules of film and television. If characters order Chinese food, it's got to be enough for fucking 18 people. <laughs> well, the thing is like that. Yeah, I think that it doesn't move the plot forward. So it'd be easy to remove. Well, right. this gang doesn't make sense because their next thing is he's also it does set up. He's like, so and I, they're like, do you see the music? Now I saw a nice jewelry store that we're going to hit next. <laughs> and it's like, 
you're already on the hook for one cop. Um, they have your uh, information. People are really getting close, and you're going to knock over a jewelry store oh. and, then, and then stay put afterwards. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I've got a perfect plan. We're going to go... We're going to go rob a jewelry store in broad daylight without masks on. <laughs> he's, a, he's an anti-masker. Uh, yes, he is. He absolutely is. Uh, what, also, uh, though, what kind of, like, fucking thieves are these guys that one day it's like a sandwich shop, exactly. and then the next day they're like, and now a jewelry store. And Jewels. Can we, can we, like, I don't know, why are they doing this? What you know? Yeah. What, what conditions led them to be like this? Well, like, income the, inequality. What, Yes, what exactly. are their the, names? The show should explore some of those issues. <laughs> yeah. Well, the, nope. Instead, we get I got a bunch of Chinese. Food. <laughs> well, it's great because Jobina is like, who is this big fucking white guy that's pushing us around? <laughs> yeah. She touches under her chin at one point to be like, I hey, hate settle down, girly. Oh, that and guy. That's just big guy. Because <laughs> well, we find out <laughs> later that they, big guy. <laughs> They met at this like greasy spoon counter. So like you're just at, so you be you you you, you get to talking with a buddy at you know you're you're like oh are you done with the sports section? Oh yeah, sure no you can take it. Hey, you want to knock over a, a liquor store with me later? Absolutely, dude. <laughs> here's here's the plan. We go sandwiches, then we go jewels. It's perfect. Now here's the plan. When we get the jewels, we have to sit down and listen to jazz while we stare <laughs> at them. That's the only way to be oh. a good jewel thief, is to listen oh, to jazz. Oh, that scene. That scene, when we get to it. Mm. <laughs> Choice. Oh, so now we, we check in on, on the lead for Carver High. We're going to uh, talk to... Uh, Actor Steve James is playing the basketball coach here that you might know him from Weekend of Bernie's 2, the American Ninja franchise to live and die in L.A., just to name a few. Yeah, man. And let's listen to, finally, the show touching on the social issues yeah. that bust me, please. It does me good. Right, come on, let's pick it up. Come on. Come on. It's the start of the practice. Let's go. Catch this. Hooker. <laughs> Oh, it's been a long time, Sergeant. <laughs> You're the coach here now? And a member of the faculty. Congratulations. You know, from that day you busted me, I've been nothing but a goal-oriented, upward, mobile, dedicated dude. Way to go, buddy. I'm looking for a kid who might have played <laughs> how here it should once. work. Named Toothpick. Hooker, he was a few years after me. But he was a pretty fair ball player. I remember him. What's his real name? <laughs> you get right as cramp. Willie Joe Ellington Brown, the third. Friend of yours? Not long he wasn't. That sucker ripped off the silver medallions that the team won for winning the league championship, and then he hocked them. Do you know where I might find him now? No. But if you do, you give him a fat lip for me. It'd be my pleasure. Do me a favor and beat the shit out of him, please. <laughs> no feeling some medals. Yeah. And it would be my pleasure. Yeah, uh, Hooker, when you remember when uh, I had like one joint in my pocket and you uh, tackled me to the ground and got me two years in prison that really turned my life around thank god i didn't smoke that joint uh, now everything's yeah, that's right. fucking roses and puppy dogs yep i bludgeoned some sense into you <laughs> by the way steve james also from previous we hate movies side order of sleaze the exterminator oh, oh nice. nice yeah that's that's who that that actor uh that's who that actor was mm -hmm. um that he he had a uh a, a distinct kind of like I'm sure he's starred in like, like industrial movies for like corporations. Oh like, wow! Like tra training videos, you know, like, like forklift just disaster had, type of stuff. <laughs> yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. You know, the, oh yes, that's right. I remember the fellow. What was you that? Know, uh, just, what was that safety hazard video that was going around on like? Kazan LimeWire back in the day. You know, I, I know exactly what you're talking about, but I don't remember Ninth any something. like titles. Oh, right. Yes. <laughs> or, oh, uh, is it? It'll, it only takes a second. Yes. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. wow. Great call, Steve. Watch that right after this. Absolutely. Wow. It only takes a second for safety. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Ben, I could definitely see this guy, uh, you know, welcoming me to the Caldor Corporation. <laughs> <laughs> and let me know what the warehouse rules are, just so I exactly. know. Exactly. Or Here's where the treadmills are. 
singing about hot <laughs> drinks at a Wendy's. You, you need to learn the hot drink song. <laughs> oh, <laughs> man. <laughs> so this is where we get to the jewelry robbery. Uh, big guy and toothpick rob this jewelry store. Uh was oh Pepper Martin sees that one of the uh, the clerks there made a funny move. What what did you do? You know, like she she's mm. triggered the alarm. It would have been cool to see her get shot. I think we just cut away. I yes, guess maybe do. it's implied. I, yeah, I don't know. They don't say it ever. Yeah, and, you know that's. I want to see her fly know. through a fucking window, man. Come on, TJ. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. No, but, I, I, Pepper Martin. He only use, big guy only uses that gun for cops, <laughs> which he does now on a blonde mustachioed cop. Ben, this, that's that, right. That, that might have made you feel good, right? To watch that for, happen <laughs> for Adam. <laughs> for, <laughs> For Adam 14 gets called in, Ooh. which, uh, you know what that means. Those guys, or at least one of them is going to die. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah, the, the fella, the fellow with the impressive mustache d- does get <laughs> hit with another one of the deadly rounds right through the uh, door of his uh, yeah. squad car. Oh yeah, that's right. Because, uh, you know, this is, this is another one of the, the, brilliantly interlaced uh, uh, writing tricks in this episode. They did say that the bullet went through a dumpster earlier. That's so right. uh, it piercing the, the cop door is just, you know, right in line with that. Yep. And Corrigan, and, and this, another uh, like trope of this episode is constantly losing them in a, in a car pursuit. So <laughs> they just drive away and Corrigan misses them. They, they switch vehicles and at some point, uh, Toothpick says, like, you fool, you shot another cop. And Pepper Martin's like, <laughs> ain't it great? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. Now we have, like, I don't know, like, a combined hundred years between us. Totally. Dude. We're getting the chair, dude. <laughs> I like how they Wait. get away. They get out of their getaway vehicle to get into a bright red station wagon <laughs> yeah. that would pull the eye of anybody on the street. And she's still driving, which I, you know, you want to switch that up a little bit. Maybe take two cars. Yeah. Maybe big guy takes a fucking bus. How about that? (laughs) Yeah. Maybe go to Mexico for a month or two. That'd be so cool. That's a smart idea. So now we're, we're getting to the crunch of the episode where we're running out of runway. So Hooker has to delegate certain plot device things to other people where, <laughs> oh, you know, Romano and Corrigan, you know, meet someone at Sherry's bar for me. He's going to be the coach that we just heard from. He'll introduce you guys to Jovina and Hooker's going to stop at the hospital on his way down there. So that way. We get that covered. We don't need that scene. We can get more of our night vigil. And it's we're, been uh, six hours since I've been able to last smell Stacy. <laughs> I have to get back to the hospital. That, lo- is, that lock of her hair is losing its flavor. <laughs> There's this one line, uh, because when Hooker gets um, bit, taken off the case, Romano and Corrigan get put together, and like, you know, like uh, Hooker is like, oh, you'll you two will make uh, uh, good partners, and then Corrigan's like, I don't know, he doesn't have as great legs as Stacy, and I'm like, oh, you mean your partner that you just got <laughs> shot that's like <laughs> clinging to life that we're we're really not sure if she's gonna make it. It's You're important. talking about her ass right now, Corrigan. It's important to know she's hot, Steve. It's yeah, very it's important point. to know. It's that it helps your emotions delegate so is- how much to care. It's always good to uh, remind the audience that a late 80s Heather Locklear is attractive. <laughs> in case anyone fucking <laughs> forgot. Uh-huh. But I think it's also them, it's for sure, but it's like them trying to like veer into like a cutesy moment and you kind of can't with the tone of this episode. And I yeah. guess for the most part, they don't have them in here. Because it's I like mean, it's like a grab ass joke and this isn't an yeah. episode for grab ass. And and it's just not as funny as the scenes of Shatner with Stacy in this bed, like talking Ooh. about her coming out of her mother's hole again. Yes, and then yes. like <laughs> and like say like uh, you know the good thing about this is is when I smell your hair this way, you can't run away anymore. Dude, this is he's fucking somewhere in this creepy monologue to her, just in this coma. He says something about you were able to lick something. Like, as in beat something, like yeah. conquer whatever it is, uh, get over, you know. And he fucking whispers in Heather Locklear's ear, you can lick anything. <laughs> it was what, ridiculous. What are we doing? This fucking she, old 1890s prospector that wrote this episode? Check this out. <laughs> you can lick anything. 
Oh, yeah. Oh, there it is. no. You can lick it. Oh, no. This is get all right. the fuck. Let's out get the these. They, they got the uh, this is bad the, uh, news. cart before the horse. Let's let the the folks at home hear the uh, part of this uh. entire de- deranged monologue. <laughs> no. He's just sweating into her face right Do you now. Remember what she used to tell me <laughs> when you were a little girl. Uh. I wish I could bottle your scent. Uh, the boogeyman would come in the middle of the night. The boogeyman, and you'd throw him out on his head. Because that's what I told you to do. Throw him out on his head like an Andy Cap cartoon. <laughs> You're a fighter, Stacy. Here it is. You can lick anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You can lick anything. <laughs> you can lick anything. Wow. You can lick anything. <laughs> Very strange uh, that he said it four times yeah. in, in the episode. Yeah. I, just, yeah. I mean, it wasn't in the script. Interesting choice. Yeah, he, he got there, Ben, as an actor. He's like, you yeah. know what? I think I think Hooker would say that four times. Do you think <laughs> yeah. there's like in a vault somewhere there's a blooper on film of William Shatner going, "You can lick everything." No, I oh oh, oh. <laughs> like he keeps accidentally saying everything <laughs> like it repeatedly. Al- it almost has that like almost a sexual tinge to it, right? Yes, it does. Oh, yeah. Of okay. course, like listen to that shit. He said that in bed. And it is, I believe, at this time, he has already given the hospital permission to operate on her, (laughs) which is like, that was an interesting scene because it's like, you'd think, you'd think her father would be, uh, would be doing that instead. Maybe. You know, her father visited her the first day she was there, Ben. He's got a lot of stuff going on. He's got he wig fittings to going get on. to. You know, Maybe right. Hooker's just pretending to be him because all these burnt out nurses, you know, they're working all these long hours. They don't recognize, you know, he's just like, no, I'm Captain Mr. Wilhelm and please operate. Oh, wow. He's fucking pretending to be him. Yeah. <laughs> Twisted shit. <laughs> <Disgusting>. <laughs> Oh my God! So here we get Hooker threatening Jovina with infinite prison unless yep. she gives up the cafeteria. Because I guess they just they they arrest her in toothpick. Like they they finally track them down, and uh, she gives up the cafeteria. Name Anna's is where toothpick and big guy always met. Well, that's because he separates. Um, they illegally uh, detain toothpick and Jovina separately at their home like if we take them to the station they're just gonna get their lawyer so like let's just leave them in their apartment and then we could do whatever we want to them (laughs) yeah Yeah, you're right (laughs) well that's after toothpick has tried to kill both what cosgrove and he has a gun at some point at the end of one of the chases before this (laughs) whatever his name is corrigan corrigan hey chris What are you talking about? <laughs> you know damn well what I'm talking about. You and Shatner. No, yeah, Chris. Chris, yeah, good point. Not to be overlooked is this scene of Shatner uh, barging into this apartment that they got from. I guess like Corrigan says they tracked down Jobina, um, Toothpick's girlfriend, but. He a pretty gifable scene of Shatner kicking the door in yeah. and then, you know, just like uh, 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 running in. There's there's a little bit of a chase here. Um, Shatner, again, uh, this is kind of calling back to earlier with, uh, you know, his uncontrollable rage. But, uh, <laughs> you know, he gets he gets the drop on him because uh, I think isn't Toothpick sneaking up with a gun at some yes. point here. Um, and Hooker gets the drop on him, almost gives him a full face punch, but has to be restrained because, uh, you know, Romano is, he's scared of what TJ might do here. You know, yeah. hit the guy's head right off his shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, Hooker, f- florid and flush face, <laughs> barely restrain his bloodlust. <laughs> The thing almost taking <laughs> toothpick in a blaze of fury. <laughs> but you know, instead he, you know, he then goes to the cafeteria oh. and just waits it out. He has like ten cups of coffee. <laughs> and then oh. he sees a big guy, I guess because it looks exactly like the Norman Rockwell sketch of him. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this <laughs> that detail for some reason made me laugh so hard because it's just like 
Yeah, he gets the he gets the detail of this this coffee shop or this this uh we're now at this we talked about it earlier. It's this shitty whatever this is. <laughs> cafeteria. Auto Mart yeah. cafeteria. Uh but like he's in his civvies jacked up on ten cups of coffee, just <laughs> ready to kill. Like as soon as Liar. this guy walks in the door. Someone could drop a spoon and he'd shoot right through them. <laughs> yes. By the way, it's just uh, so I, funny. Uh I have to point out that the the way Hooker finds himself at this establishment, the way he convinces Jovina to give up the name, Steve, you kind of mentioned it already, like him threatening her with a lengthy jail sentence. But the fucking line is crazy. He goes, uh, he says like something about, you know, I'll put you away and you're going to be an old woman with no figure by the yes. time you get out of jail. <laughs> Good God. <laughs> Come on! Uh, went no, too hard there, uh, Hooker. Went too hard. <laughs> <laughs> I love... Um, so our friend Big Guy here, he's mowed down... He's cut down, as we, we say yes. in the episode. Yeah. As, a, as an 1870s prospector would say. Uh, two police officers. He's got, like, I don't know, 60 grand worth of jewelry. His picture is everywhere. He cannot get in touch with his uh, co-conspirators. So I'm just gonna go about my business. Go, you know, keep my regular routines. You know, <laughs> go still to- put in three appearances at the coffee shop. That's see how go hooked back to my that- hotel. Yeah, that's how hooked on this Anna's he is, dude. And it's oh. like where everyone saw both of you all the time. <laughs> it's it's crazy. It's relationships we don't have anymore. You don't have a cafeteria friend anymore. No, you true. used to be able to go no. to a cafeteria and make friends and then become criminal co conspirators with But them. so just <laughs> like look, I know it's gonna be tough, but just spend like three weeks getting coffee at Burger King. Okay. <laughs> sure. There you go. <laughs> it keeps me away from the gas chamber. <laughs> but no, I won't do it. <laughs> and then like when this dude leaves hooker's just stalking him in the night which is beautiful <laughs> walking down the street and pepper martin is like like when he like ducks behind a building and looks back and hooker's gone oh yeah he's back again well i i i expected a rooftop chase here that's where i thought we were going yeah but no no no, no. It, it's nope. so much creepier than that it it turns it it's almost like taxi driver in a way here <laughs> yeah yes. you know but our, our crook you know he, yes he does he feels like he's being followed which but and we get this is like a, a moment of hooker stealth which we don't usually get here scheming you know he'd be he's scheming he What's, he becomes one with the city. It's also great <laughs> because, because it's like it's like some uh, IRL like scuzzy downtown LA, and it looks awesome. Yeah. Oh yeah, he's like blending in with like the trash cans, you know, like <laughs> he kind of undetectable. His figure doesn't look like a big garbage bag kind. Of, you know. <laughs> is, uh, is there a police, an undercover police officer behind me or is there a raccoon sleeping on a trash can? <laughs> yeah. No, it must be a raccoon sleeping on a trash can. Why Pedestrians is that sack always... of garbage wearing a wig? <laughs> <laughs> Pedestrians always come by and just throw trash in my mouth because they think I'm a garbage bag. <laughs> <laughs> it's not true. I'm a human being, goddammit. Well, it's a... Uh... My suspicions are proving to be off base. I better get home and go count my jewels. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it. That, well, cra- you got to crank the jazz first, yes. Ben. Oh, yes. Like yes. All, all paranoid people who are worried about getting caught, you blast the fucking Hank Mobley out the fucking window <laughs> at what? Like 9 p.m. at night? Jesus Christ. With all of your contraband right in front of you. <laughs> right there. It, it, is, it, oh, it is so it's... fucked up because Hooker goes into this, like, I guess it's like a hotel kind of situation where he's living it, at it's a full-on flop house it definitely yeah. is yeah. yep ask this clerk like what the dude's room is oh it's 505 oh good and call the academy precinct hooker needs backup tell them to send <laughs> four adam 16 they'll bend the law in my favor <laughs> yeah, exactly. they'll clean up my mess wait you're telling me a hooker needs backup at that hotel <laughs> yeah you got the wrong number this is the police department <laughs> Uh, yeah, and I this love This guy says he wants a BJ with a hooker. Hang up on him. <laughs> I don't know. He wants four Adams to go rail some hooker. I don't know what's happening. 
We don't do that here, fella. I, I, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> but he sure is fucking sugar. The hooker goes up to the door, does not announce himself as a police officer, just kicks it in. And again, there's no big fight. There's no monologue by big guy why he's got... He just shoots this dude twice in the chest Execution. and he goes through a window. Yep. It, Executes this dude. See, yeah. that's the it thing, is. Steve. You don't need to announce yourself as a police oh. officer when you fully intend on murdering this guy. <laughs> oh, I mean, again, jacked up on 10 cups of Anna's <laughs> Java. He's he's ready to kill. And, and it's just this whole scene, putting this whole thing together, this guy, Blair in the big band, counting his jewels <laughs> tj hooker coming up uh, on the door you think you're gonna get like your expectations are like some kind of showdown akin yeah. to what you've seen before on this show but no this guy doesn't have a name therefore we are just kicking this door in and blowing him away yep and it, Man, uh, it's glorious it, him going out the window yeah, splattering yep. on the pavement, and then four Adam sixteen rolling up to say, "Folks, nothing to see here." There, yeah. this is this is unusual for this show, right? That, that, that this would be the ending, like that Hooker it, just it kills. Is, well, Cooker does kill a lot of people, but usually it is definitely more in line of they're definitely going to kill him, and it's been part of a thing for a while. It's not. He usually right. does not like kick in the door of a private residence and shoot someone <laughs> in the fucking chest immediately. <laughs> Interesting. But it's this season was, four, yeah. and all bets are off. Yeah, all bets These are, are off. These are legends. <laughs> he. Th this was. <laughs> Yes, this is full on bloodlust. You see big guy's soul leave his body. <laughs> yep. Enter into Hooker through his mouth like he <laughs> absorbs him fully. He's going to get his soul sucked. <laughs> oh, he tasted good. Mm. Mm. <laughs> good in my soul. <laughs> you know, I didn't clip the end. So the last scene is just uh, checking in on Stacy again, and she's coming to after having done surgery and everything is is seemingly getting back to normal. And there's a call back to the, oh, you had a dream with the boogeyman. Did you throw him out again? And then he just starts kissing her arm. <laughs> mm. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's just he's grateful she's still alive. Well, that's yeah. all that but is. Your, no, her, dad, her dad is grateful for the Dodger tickets he has. That's what <laughs> but, he is. No, 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 no. But you're not promoting scenes from a marriage, the remake. You can't do shit like this. Sorry, Hooker. You're going to have to tend to my daughter. They're box seats. <laughs> uh, it's also totally twisted that when Heather Locklear wakes up, the literally the first thing she says is, Hooker. <laughs> Are you kidding? And it's like, oh, uh, did we get him? And he's like, <laughs> yes, Stacy, I murdered that guy. That's amazing. I feel great now. <laughs> did you smell me a bunch? That's okay. <laughs> I know you do. <laughs> I noticed some of my hair was missing. That's okay, Hunter. <laughs> Speaking of smelling a bunch, what do we think, gang? Is this a stinker or a winner? Let's go around. Uh, Andrew, what do you think about this? month's installment this is a fucking winner winner chicken dinner dude this is season four episode one this is some unhinged shit you know it's getting crazy when the other cops in the episode are like hooker this is just really illegal police stuff you're doing right now man. <laughs> like they've even uh, had enough it's season four no it's fucking great hookers a he is fucking jason Voorhees, man that guy's a menace to this city <laughs> steve what do you think uh, yeah, um, I was. You had me at Pepper Martin, obviously. <laughs> I also just bought uh, a VHS tape called Evil Altar, which is the only Ooh. thing uh, that Pepper Pepper Martin's known for on IMDb. It's Superman Two, Superman Two, the Richard Donner cut, yep. and Evil <laughs> Altar, and some other TV show what, called uh, Toma. What is Evil Altar? I. This is why I bought it. Um, sight unseen in the small town of Red Rock. A devil worshiping cult in league with the local sheriff yep. kidnaps victims for sacrifice. Yep, yep, yep. Mm, all right. Wait, this Not is available a movie anywhere except. For, yeah, it's a movie. So I I'm like gonna, that. I'm watch. Is he? Uh, is, but yeah, is, who's Pepper playing? Is he like a sheriff or a cultist? You haven't watched it yet, so I'm grilling. No, you. I'm grilling you for no reason. He, Pepper Martin is uh, uh, credited as collector, which I Ooh, like. The, oh uh, my god, that sounds creepy like as fuck. I, I like do. Uh, <laughs> so collector. 
But Evil, yeah, uh, yeah. Well, big TJ winner, Hooker, for me. big winner. All right, Chris, uh, you 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 you're thinking it's a win? Oh yeah, Bangaruski, and uh, I would say you know what really sold it. I mean, it's a good story and everything, but like I, it, seeing all the little character actors, like the guy who plays Cassius, um, of course, uh, Flash Jenkins, uh, George Chung is the Doctor who's been yes, in every yes. movie you've ever seen. Yep. I, I did um, not mention him, uh, but yes, he was also even on Seinfeld. Uh, there's a lot of Seinfeld yes, connections with the Teej averse. It was also a very just engaging episode in general. I wasn't bored ever, uh, even with the life is great moment. <laughs> well, I, I, I agree with you guys so far. It was, it's a fast paced episode with sometimes they get, a, they get a little slow with TJ trying to do anyway. Ben, <laughs> Ben, you agree Absol- with everyone? Oh, absolutely. Um, it, it, it felt, you know, you go back and listen to some of the end of season three, there was, uh, a couple episodes where, you know, th- yeah, things were getting a little slower. The show felt like it was weighed down a little bit by its formula. This felt like a uh, kind of a, a defibrillation of that. Um, now, whether or not w- we get a- another magical combo of, of two guys born before World War I, uh, uh you know, <laughs> combining to make a make a scintillating episode, I don't know. Uh, but I'm hoping this this vitality continues in season four. Um, and, and you know what, you can hear it in the pod too. We've got the, got the clips peppered in pepper martined into the episode here. Like this is, uh, this is good stuff. Very good stuff. It's, it's very exciting. I'm very excited for what's to become of not only the adventures of TJ hooker, but us here in podcast land. And speaking of podcast land, we hate movies. Now you guys, I understand you do a podcast here. Yes, we do. It's about movies. You indeed. It's a com- is a noted comedy show. <laughs> now, do, do you guys enjoy these movies that you watch, or we, we usually hate them, Ben? Oh, oh, that, oh, that, that, why is that? That's weird. Because uh, we're racist. <laughs> we're a bunch of no. <laughs> no, no, no. The word hate always. That's where it goes sure. these days. Yeah, you know, yeah, that's, that's the sad true. part of the world, is it, is ladies it, and gentlemen. It, 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 isn't hate a strong word? <laughs> Dude, that's why we get the, the, the sounds like those one star reviews we get where they're like, don't listen to this. It's racist. They say <laughs> racist things in this I'll, one I'll, star podcast. <laughs> I'll stop the bit that I'm not also on We Hate Movies. And I actually know <laughs> what it is. Uh, WHMpodcast.com if you want to hear the, the, these guys talk more with me most of the time. Um, and I understand we're going on tour. Uh, the proof of vaccination tour. I want to quickly mention it to any hooker heads out there that might not know this. And hey, you know, I'm going to be there. So October 13th, hilarities in Cleveland, Ohio. This is all 2021, by the way. And proof of vaccination <laughs> is required. October 16th, the Majestic Theater in Detroit, Michigan. Uh, November 18th, The Comedy Zone, Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, November 19th, The Orange Peel in Asheville, North Carolina. And November 21st at Zanies in Nashville, Tennessee, as well as the uh, December 9th, uh, Brooklyn, New York, the 10th anniversary show of We Hate Movies, one year late. It's going to be very exciting. All tickets for these live podcast events are at whmpodcast.com. There it yeah. is. Yeah. Woo. Yeah. Woo. Yes. Very and, exciting. Very exciting. And Ben, I, I, I hope we'll be able to get in the squad car again next month. Some of the blue suits, all of our, our hotshot blue suits, were very concerned that the show went dark for a little bit. It did go dark, but uh, now it's going light. The reds have been hit. Yeah. And, uh, you know, unless we lose you to the road, uh, I-, I would say uh, we're in we're in good shape here. <laughs> Previous episodes at TJHookerPodcast.com. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter at TJHookerPodcast to see that vitter of this roller skating shenanigan. <laughs> and, uh, you know, until next month, I don't know, guys, Sherry's Bar, maybe, I don't know. Uh, fucking lean on Jovina, see if she turns up anything. Yeah, yeah sure. so she's got a couple of J's I can bum. I just want to ask I, her what her name is. I just have to I get it straight from the precise, horse's mouth. Precise I spelling. don't know. Guys, guys, come on. I, I think we we need to go down to Anna's. We need to... Oh, a little sloppy plate. We need yeah, to get right. a sloppy plate. We need to each get 
just a mountain full of coffee to, to guzzle down and, and just see where the night takes us. Right. We can maybe shoot a, shoot a stranger. I'm going to call him a stranger because they don't sure. really meet. I'm going to get I'm going to get a bunch of ice cream. I don't know about everybody else. I'm going to get a bunch of ice cream. Ooh. <laughs> Meatloaf sandwich Ooh. over here. With mm-hmm. ice cream on top. Yes. Uh, mm-hmm. Delicious. <laughs> I'm going to get a tomato sandwich. You're going to get booked. <laughs> TJ Booker. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the end of the show. We're going to just talk out of the theme song a little bit. Yeah. I'm chewing a, I'm chewing a pretzel. Right See, I was, I was setting you up for the, you can lick anything, dude. With the ice oh. cream. Oh, yeah. You can lick anything. Thank you. Oh, oh, God damn it. That actually would have been Steve. great, Steve. I should have, I should have had my head in the game. Steve. We fucked No, I, 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 want, I just wanted to hear it one more time, so I begged for it. Yeah. You fucking <laughs> begged for it. <laughs> oh my god! This is a fucking epic theme song. Fuck yeah! This is a good pretzel. Those pretzels making you thirsty? They are. They're making you thirsty.